So welcome back to another episode of the new things we want to see in FIFA 21. We're about three months away and the time is getting closer and closer to the FIFA 21 reveal. And uh, it might be a little bit too late to request any of these things, but we'll see what happens. We're going to be covering what you guys want to see. I've gathered a lot of your feedback and we've got some interesting concepts and ideas in today's video. Now, according to YouTube, we have 77% of you guys not subscribed but watching the video. So if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe and join the other side. Today's video is sponsored by OneFootball. OneFootball is the best app to get all the latest football news and live updates. You can check scores, tables, and news from across the world, any competition you want. I've been using this app for many, many years before they've even sponsored the channel, and it's the only football app I've got on my phone because it covers everything. So if you want to download it yourself, check out my link in the description. You can download it for free. So in each episode, I like to include some face suggestions, and this week we're going to include Mason Greenwood. Now, I know it's a bit of United bias, but Hey, there's a lot of United players that are doing well at the moment that have generic faces, like a Bruno Fernandes, even Mason Greenwood. And Mason Greenwood is one of those uh, future players that would be nice in career mode as well for anyone. And if he has a real face, it will just make him much more of an attractive signing because a lot of people just buy players who have real faces. So it would be nice to see him get a real face. He's a good player in real life, very young prospect, and he's going to be good for career mode people. Now, Pez has already beaten EA to the job. They do have a nice real face for Mason Greenwood, albeit because Man United are partners with Pez this year. They got the opportunity to scan the players, but Pez always does a good job with player faces for young players and for players around the world. Now, I'm not sure if EA can go and scan Greenwood. I guess they could make him a custom face. I would be happy with that given the licensing circumstances with the clubs, but... I think it's one of those priority faces that needs to happen because crew mode people would absolutely love it as well. Now this next one comes from Rocco, it's another crew mode suggestion and he would like the ability to actually update stadiums during your career mode save. Now, of course, we're talking about licensing here as well. You can't just get Old Trafford and start adding in 20 new stands because EA pays for the licensing. But for any generic stadium, it might be useful to have this ability where especially in the lower divisions like clubs from the fourth league who obviously have a generic stadium in the game. When you bring them up to the Premier League, you can have a totally different stadium because you have more money to spend and all that kind of stuff. So there is a use for it, but it's just about applying it maybe to unlicensed stadiums, the generic stadiums, and of course you would need a stadium creator as well. So I think in episode one we spoke about a stadium creator. That would be useful, and uh, you could update your stadium if you're using a generic one in career mode. I don't think that would hurt any licensing laws and all that kind of stuff. So it would be really cool to see something like that in the future. So next up we have a suggestion from OG Crip. He says that he would like to see EA add the ability where players in the game can give fans their shirts after the match. Now you see in real life sometimes where the players take off their shirt after a match and run over to the fans, give it to a little kid or something in the crowd, or just throw it into the crowd in general, and uh, this never really happens in FIFA. Now it's not just players taking their shirts off after the game, in FIFA you can't really take the shirts off in general, so as a celebration you can't do it, but I think Pez does have the ability to take a player's shirt off during a celebration, but it's only for select players, I think it's Neymar, but I think maybe there is another player, but I know 100% that it is Neymar that can do it. from the main man I had a feeling he might do something given his reputation but to do it like that absolutely brilliant I wasn't expecting that so yeah that's basically the cutscene when you score with Neymar he does take the shirt off if you press the R stick he does get a yellow card just like in real life you do get like a yellow card if you take your shirt off but I think if you do two of them you get a red card so he does get sent off and uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. In FIFA, you can't do that. And also in Pez, after the match, there is some cutscenes where the players take off their shirts and you see like a singlet thing as well. I don't think they hand it over to the crowd, but they do walk around just waving at the fans and stuff and they have like a sports singlet on. So it's similar to what you would see in real life as well. In FIFA, that doesn't happen. So there was two instances of players taking their shirts off in Pez, so why don't we see anything like this in FIFA? Well, there was an interview by the director of FIFA, Matt Pryor, and he basically spoke about why they don't have players taking off their shirts. So Matt Pryor says to Dream Team Gaming back in like 2018 or something that it's very, very difficult for them to get an in-game player to take their shirt off. He goes, this is because of the morphing of the textures. It's one of those weird things that in real life it seems too easy, but from a gaming standpoint, 
it's incredibly difficult. So basically there's something with the textures that prevents them in the game from having a player taking off their shirt. So you might be thinking, since it's so difficult for EA, how come it's not for Konami? Well, Konami does a clever workaround with this thing. So basically when you score with Neymar, it's actually a cutscene. It's not actually like FIFA where the player is running to the post and then he takes his shirt off in real time. Konami celebrations are just basically cutscenes, so they're allowed to do that. And that's what you see when you take the shirt off. It's just a cutscene. Now, after the game as well, that is just another cutscene. So they can do that as well. And FIFA could use cutscenes as well if they decided to copy Konami. Like, after the game, you could have a cutscene where the guy takes his shirt off, gives it to the fan, and then walks off. You know, that's not probably too hard. But if they were to have a celebration, the way FIFA does celebrations where they run to the corner and in real time they're trying to take off their shirt, that's probably not going to be possible or incredibly difficult. So if they were to have a celebration where you take your shirt off, it's probably going to be a cutscene where you don't really see the guy taking the shirt off. It just sort of happens like Konami's one. So next up we have a suggestion from MCC and he would like to see something that I call dynamic crowds in FIFA. So basically he says when you're playing a match and you're winning 3-0 or you're winning by any big margin and it's near the end of the match, you should be able to see in real time as you're playing a match, fans from your team or from the opposition team getting up and leaving early with maybe 10 minutes to go, 5 minutes to go, sometimes even 20 minutes to go depending on the score. And you sort of see this in real life as well when there's a big margin and there's no chance this team is coming back from it. And you see the home fans just getting up and leaving early or even fans from the team that is getting beaten leaving early as well. But in FIFA, you could be winning 25-0 against the team and their fans are there still cheering the team on, still chanting. Now, I know some will stay and do that, but a lot of people do leave. But in FIFA, it's still a full crowd until the 90th minute. You don't see anyone get off the seats. Now, I think as we head into the next-gen consoles, FIFA 21 will be out on those as well. I think EA should focus on improving the crowds. The only thing I can remember about the crowds is having those security guys walking up and down the stairs, and they're doing absolutely nothing else. That's the only improvement I remember in the Frostbite era. Oh, yeah. Also, remember those seven fans that they added into every cutscene when you start a match, and they're supporters for every club. Like, every match you go into, you see the same seven guys, and they're taking selfies. That's the only two improvements I remember to the crowds over the last few years. So I think dynamic crowds and crowds leaving early could be a cool feature for next-gen consoles if they can do it. I don't know if it's hard to code or something. I don't think it would be that hard, but I don't really know these things. But there's also another element to dynamic crowds, and that's also like different competitions and different tiers should have different fan attendances. Like a League 2 game should not have a full sold out stadium like a Premier League one. And there should be some games where, you know, you have empty stadiums or fans that don't show up like empty seats. I know there's a few in certain stadiums. I think I saw a few cutscenes in the pre-match warm-ups and stuff where the stadium looks half empty. But for the most part, most of the stadiums do look pretty full, even if it's like a League 2 game that doesn't really matter. So yeah, I think it would be cool to have dynamic crowds where you see people leaving early during a match, even attendances being different between games, depending on how important the game is and depending on like what league you're in. So I think that's stuff they could work on with the next generation of consoles because this generation is pretty much done. And like I said earlier, I think EA can do a lot more with the presentation and the overall crowds and all that stuff in FIFA. Now, if there's one thing that made FIFA 20 a bit of a disaster was the amount of bugs and glitches in the game. It still has a lot of bugs and glitches, but EA spent most of the year just patching out all the issues, and there's still plenty more to go. But this one apparently was supposed to be patched in one of the title updates from January, I believe. And it was basically the bug where you would edit your goalkeeper in Edit Player, and then the goalkeeper kit would turn into like an outfield kit. And EA said they patched in one of the title updates, and apparently it's still plaguing the game. It's not really 100% fixed. So FIFA Career Gems, a fellow YouTuber, put out this tweet that said, you know, isn't it frustrating to have this bug in the game? So yeah, it's definitely something EA needs to fix. They said they fixed it. I'm positive that they don't even realize that it's still sort of in the game still. So next up, we have a suggestion about the press conferences. This one comes from BP Mason. He says that there should be more options when talking to the press or players. So I'm guessing this also incorporates player conversations. He says that you should have the ability to tell players they aren't good enough or they just aren't wanted at the club. So you, basically what he's trying to say is you should have the option to turn heel and basically insult the players if you really want to instead of being Mr. All Positive. Now he also wants the ability to talk badly about other team and managers or even the referees. The ability to defend aggressive play instead of only being able to apologize and say you will change because sometimes I want to play aggressive and I won't change. Yeah, I found that question to be stupid as well. It's like, why would you want to apologize for playing aggressively if you got the three points, you've done nothing wrong? It should have the ability to say, like, 
no, I'm not changing the way I'm playing. We're doing well, and you know what I'm trying to say, you know. There's definitely a lot of improvement that needs to be made with those press conference answers and the player conversations. It was a good start to incorporate it in FIFA 20, but there needs to be more options. You need the ability to turn heel. You can't be Mr. Positive all the time, even though it does boost your morale. But some people want to play dirty, and I think there needs to be more dirtier responses sometimes. There's also some questions in the press conferences that don't make sense, especially the one where you have a couple losses in a season, and then the guy asks you if you want to continue your undefeated run. It just doesn't make sense because you've actually lost in the season. So we have another suggestion from BP Mason, and he would like to see more positions in the edit player mode. He goes, I want to see the ability to set a player's position as center mid, left wing or right wing, or left wing back, right wing back, and be able to set second, third, fourth positions as well. So if we go to the edit player, this thing is just crap in general. You know, there's so many issues with it, especially when you back out, it goes all the way to the home menu. But if we try and edit Xhaka here, who is a center defensive midfielder, let's say I wanted to make him a center midfielder, I can't. So if I go to the midfielder option, there's only attacking, defensive, left and right midfielder. There's no center midfielder. And to me, it always baffled me as to why they don't have this thing. I don't know if there's any technical reason or just they just decided they don't want it because most formations have a center midfielder. Some have defensive midfielder, some have attacking, but... I think a center midfielder is a crucial position as well. And you should be able to change a CDM to a center mid or a cam to a center mid. I don't know why you can't do it in FIFA. And there's also those other positions there as well. Like wingers, you can't really do that. You can only have center forward, left forward, or right forward. And then you can have left mid or right mid. So there is a few positions missing from this edit player thing. I don't know why, but to me, they should have more. So make sure you check out this FIFA 20 video. Hit the card in the middle. I'll see you next time.